Let's say someone is a photographer and always wanted to have a Leica rangefinder camera. And let's say that person was able to save and collect a lot of money over the years. And finally, the person was able to purchase a camera like this. So this is the Leica M10R. It's the newest Leica M series rangefinder camera in the Leica lineup. And the person had to spend $8,000 on this camera. Now, the story doesn't end here, of course, because this is a body only situation. There is no lens here and the person already spent 8,000 bucks. So what are you going to do? What alternatives do you have? Now, the person might want to look into the Leica lens universe and then come up with, I think, one of the best known and probably also one of the sharpest lenses in the Leica M portfolio and perfectly suitable for the M10R because here we talk about a 40 megapixel sensor, so a lot of resolution and you want to be sure that the glass you have in front of that sensor is carrying over that high resolution. So this here is the Aposumicron and it's the Aposumicron 50 millimeter. As I said, one of the sharpest, best lenses in the Leica lineup. And now the person wants to have that lens and combine it with that body. And now we are talking about the journey starting all over again. You have to save another 8,000 bucks to actually purchase that lens. And then all in with one 50 millimeter lens, you are at a price tag of $16,000 for the body and for the lens. Maybe I should add that this is kind of my story because many years ago, when I started photography and I built up my own portfolio and I became experienced in photography, I had not a lot of money to spend into gear. And uh, clearly I was always looking for alternatives. So if you have the dream body of your choice, what can you do to bridge the time until you saved enough money to actually purchase a Leica lens like the Aposumicron 50 millimeter? So let's get the super expensive Aposumicron 50 millimeter out of sight here and let's think about alternatives. Let's put the M10R to the sideline and let's have a look at this camera here. This is a camera people have not seen on my channel so far, but I love it and I own it for a while. It's a Leica M4. It's an old school film camera and currently there's a black and white film roll in that camera here. The build year of this camera is 1969 and its condition is still very, very good. So I love that camera. I bought it secondhand, of course, because they are not newly built. And the lens I have on this film camera is a Voigtländer lens. And the name is Nocton, comes from the word night, of course, out of Latin. And if you look at its widest open aperture is an f 1.2. So this lens is very fast and with 40 millimeters somewhere sitting between wide angle and between a normal focal length of 50 millimeter. And this lens here, for instance, has a price tag of give or take $1,000. I purchased this newly. Voigtlander is still producing these lenses. The build quality is very nice. Focus ring is very smooth. Aperture ring with the usual clicks. Very nice. And the optical qualities of that lens are also very good and fully acceptable on a body like the M10R. So you can use these lenses nicely on an M10R camera. There is no problem. The lens I want to talk about in this video is different and it gets even cheaper. And maybe we put this in perspective. So when we talk about expensive Leica lenses like the Aposumicron 50 millimeter, or maybe if you want to go even faster, the Noctilux 50 millimeter, we talk about $8,000 and $12,000 give or take. The cheapest lens in the Leica M universe, if I'm not mistaken, is about $2,400. And the just shown Voigtländer lens here already was substantially cheaper with $1,000. But you can take this even further. And uh, again, let's get the expensive Leica lenses out of sight here. Let's put the M10R on the sideline and let's have a look at a lens which is really cheap and really affordable. And this is what this video is about. I want to have a look at this lens. It's a lens from Seven Artisans. The price tag of that lens is only $400. And it interested me a lot to find out what a $400 lens with uh, 50 millimeters on a Leica M10R can actually achieve. Let's kick off the video. A natural reaction if you hear about a $400 lens and I come to the optical properties of the lens in a moment because this is a very special $400 lens and you want to mount it on a Leica M10R, the natural reaction might be, 
what can you possibly achieve with a lens like this if the normal lenses which you have in that Leica lineup cost you $8,000? What's the difference and how can they make it possible to sell a lens for $400 and uh, still achieve something meaningful which is worthwhile to mount the lens on this super expensive camera body? So let's have a look at the lens and first of all let's have a look how it was shipped. And that's interesting, the lens came in this package here. So here it says seven artisans lens and uh, is a really low profile packaging here, but it comes already with some features. Let's open this up. So what we have here is a screwdriver and with that screwdriver, you can recalibrate and adjust the lens if you need to. There are tiny little screws here and uh, you can adjust them and seven artisans also provides a quick manual how you actually adjust the lens which is also very nice so if you look at that here there is a manual where they show you how you can recalibrate the lens if you would note that the distance scale is not working in the way it should and things are not in focus if they actually should be in focus so that's the first thing to mention let's close the box here let's get this out of sight now looking at the lens itself this is a very fast lens and uh, you see it here, it's a 50 millimeter lens, so comparable to the Noctilux from Leica, and it's very fast. This is an f1.1 as widest open aperture. On the Noctilux, we have f0.95, which is the extreme, of course, and you pay your price to get this extreme. But f1.1 typically is also very expensive, even f1.2 and sometimes f1.4, depending on the brand and the type of the lens can be very expensive. Getting a lens as fast as f1.1 for $400 I think is really remarkable. Now maybe you could think that the build quality has made compromises and that's absolutely not the case. So if we close that aperture here, the first thing to notice there are no clicks, no stops. It's a smooth aperture which by the way makes this lens very nice for videographers and film shooters because you would not hear any clicks if you play with aperture in a video. It has also disadvantages of course because here you never exactly know where you are. So this is very likely an f5.6, this is an f8. In between you don't have any stops. It's what I would call a continuous aperture but it works buttery smooth. If you look at that here how it opens, let me try to bring this into perspective here because of light reflections is not ideal, but I think here in this way you can see it is buttery smooth. And the widest open as I said is 1.1, here is 1.4, and uh, the build quality of this lens is absolutely astonishing. Also the focus ring here, if I turn the focus ring, it's absolutely silent, it has just the right firm movement if you turn this focus ring here, and it is very, very well built. Everything here is out of metal. The body of that lens is out of metal. The lens cap is out of metal here. So producing a lens like this for $400, I think is a really remarkable achievement. And let's have quickly a look at that company, Seven Artisans, and uh, let's see what this company is made of and where they come from. If we go to their website, we find the Seven Artisans story, and it all seems to have started in summer 2015 with a group of Chinese camera enthusiasts and uh, they basically decided to develop high quality lenses with good optical properties and in this case for the Leica M series rangefinder cameras. And uh, over the years they developed their business and if you see the images later I've taken with that $400 budget lens, you will see they also did a remarkable job. Actually if you look at the box where the lens was shipped, it says Shenzhen and Shenzhen is mainland China. So these lenses are produced in China and they are shipped to all different places in the world. What I should also say is I have no affiliation at all with Seven Artisans. I bought this lens with my own money in order to try it out. Back to the lens itself, there is not much more to say. Everything on this lens is very well made and uh, I want to mount this now on my Leica M10R and then go out and shoot test this lens and share my images and my impressions of course and the image quality with you on my channel here. So let's open this up here. This is actually the only plastic part of the lens. I think all the rest is out of metal. It's very nice. And 
it also looks nice on the M10R. It looks actually very nice. It looks like this lens had been made for a Leica M series rangefinder camera. And the reason why I want to test this on the M10R is if the resolution is coming over with that lens on the M10R, it will be perfectly suitable for any other M series rangefinder camera because 40 megapixel is the maximum you get, even on the M10 monochrome. And the typical former M series rangefinder cameras have 24 megapixels. So if it can carry over 40 megapixels, it will serve well all other camera bodies. Let's get started with shootings and images. So I imported now a bunch of images from the Leica M10R shot with the Seven Artisans 50 millimeter f1.1 into Lightroom and want to make certain aspects transparent and visible to you and share my experience how it was shooting with that lens. First of all, this is an image taken at f1.1 and you see a very creamy, dreamy background here. Some people might argue that the background blurriness is a little bit too lively and on some Leica lenses it might be even more smooth and creamy, but I think it's a very good result. And uh, given that this has been shot at f1.1, it's also remarkably sharp. So this is a 200% crop. If I would go to 100% crop, it's reasonably sharp where the focus is sitting. And clearly I could have taken down the highlights here a little bit in the flowers, but in general I think an interesting and good result. Here is the same kind of scene, but I stopped down to f8. And now of course you get more depth of field here. Again, where the focus is sitting, remarkably sharp. Let's look at a 200% crop. I think that looks really good and I like what I'm seeing here. It's in general the case, if you have five photographers sitting in a room, you have five different opinions, whether they like or dislike the bokeh and the background blurriness, as we saw in the previous image. Now, what will interest people most is how is the lens dealing with people and with portraits in general. And uh, this is an image taken in the evening. You see here some background lights. And I think here the background blurriness and the bokeh is fantastic. So this image was shot at f1.1, so widest open aperture on that $400 budget lens. And if I zoom into 100%, it's reasonably sharp. It is a bit soft if I would stop down the Nocti looks from Leica to this aperture, let's say f1.1, f1.2, it would probably be a little bit sharper. And I thought at the beginning when I made this video, it's pointless to put these lenses side by side and compare a $400 budget lens with a $12,000 Leica branded lens. In particular, and that's important to remark, since Leica is calculating and optimizing their lenses, in particular for Leica M-series sensors. So there is a perfect calibration of the lens towards the sensor in order to achieve the best possible result. But it's reasonably sharp. And by the way, if you look at skin, in general, the ladies will appreciate if there is a soft touch in a portrait because it makes the skin even more beautiful. And the general impression of that image is very nice. I think this is a really good portrait of my model in the foreground here. Another image again at f1.1. Again, the same situation on the sharpness. And I think this is a highly usable portrait and a very nice background blurriness here. This image was taken at f2 and so I stopped down a little bit on that lens without the clicks and you get a bit more depth of field, higher sharpness of course, but still a very nice background situation here and a nice three-dimensional pop of the image. This was stopped down to f4, again even more depth of field and you see also the fingers in the foreground now but the background is still very nice and I think also is a peaceful background. So now with this scene, the background is not as lively as we saw it, for instance, on that image here, where you have a bit more, let's say, structure in the background. You don't have this here because there is not so much structure and then the lens can really shine. Here is another image and uh, don't get me wrong, these photos are nothing to write home about. I took them solely to test the lens. So here this was about sharpness on the corn. What I should say first is the color as it comes from the corn in the background is exactly the color I saw with my eyes. So the color reproduction of the lens in combination with the Leica M10R sensor is really nice and really remarkable. And overall the image, if I go to 100% crop, but even to a 200% crop at an aperture of f5.6 is super sharp and super crisp. There's really nothing to complain about when I look into that image. 
Moving on here, I played a little bit with the structure of the sky. I wanted to see how the colors come across. And again, the colors come across very natural here. This was a hazy day and this is an exact replication of the scene I had in front of my eyes. Here another image which was shot at f5.6. So again, we get some three-dimensional look here from the background blurriness. If we look at these berries here, they are super sharp. So if I go to a 200% crop, f5.6 looks really, really good. And uh, since you have a lot of crop reserves on 40 megapixels, you could probably use these lens for all kinds of artistic photography if you wanted. Here is another image where I tested the lens, how it deals with light. So here was a shadow and bright background light situation. I think it's a good result, probably also because the Leica M10R sensor is such an excellent sensor, but the lens was playing with that sensor in the way I hope. And again, the sharpness, if I go to 200% crop, is remarkable. So this lens has absolutely no difficulties in dealing with 40 megapixels and clearly it has then also no difficulties in being mounted on any other M-series rangefinder camera from Leica. So a really good result and then the last couple of images I wanted to show is this one. Again a bit more lively background blurriness here based on the structure of the scene but the flower itself is remarkably sharp. Going again to a 200% crop Really good. This image was taken again at an aperture of f5.6. So I think also here the lens did shine. And then the last image, just again to look into the sky. You see on the background on the mountains how hazy the day was. But you see also the incredible amount of detail in the image if I go to 200% crop. And there is even here on the left hand side a biker which is super crisp and super sharp. So all in, shooting that $400 budget lens on the $8,000 Leica M10R was a pleasure from a handling perspective, but also the image quality was completely convincing to me. And if you want to enter the Leica universe, if you become a Leica shooter over time and uh, your photography or other jobs you have are not paying back you yet in the way you like it, go for the body first. The M10R is an excellent body, the M10 monochrome if you are a black and white shooter is another excellent body, but I can also recommend secondhand other Leica M series cameras because they are all good in its own way. And uh, on the lens side, take your time, take a deep breath. There is no need to spend another several thousand dollars on an original Leica lens. There are excellent budget lenses out there which you can use to gain experience in rangefinder series photography. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. If you liked my channel, please subscribe, stay tuned on my content. Thanks for watching and peace out.